<laughs> finally. We finally made it. The last episode, episode 7. Welcome back. I've been making Kakashi videos for like three months. <laughs> Let's get to it. Before I start rigging, I'm going to create a backup collection for the hair curves. In the outliner, select all the hair curves, copy and paste them into the hair archive collection. Disable this archive collection. In object mode, select all the hair curves again and hit F3 to search for convert to. Select mesh from curve. This will change the curves into meshes. I think we discussed this while modeling the hair. Again, if you have geometry limitations, you probably want to simplify these curves before converting them. Select all the hair meshes and hit Ctrl J to join them into one object. If you have a thumb joint that's too far forward like mine, select and dissolve this middle edge loop. Edge slide the other two edge loops, add another loop in the middle, select and dissolve edge loops on the front five edges. Now we're ready to start rigging. In object mode, shift A to add an armature single bone. Tab into edit mode, grab the end handles of the bone and drag them on the Z axis to have it span about the length of his chest. Grab the top handle and slide it back on the Y axis. Hit F3 and search for subdivide. Divide the spine into three parts or more if you want to. Grab this top handle and extrude out a neck and then extrude again to the top of his head. Select the base of the neck and extrude out a shoulder. Extrude a bone out to the wrist, subdivide this bone and move it back on the Y axis. Try to make sure it's lined up with the middle of the elbow joint. Select this bone and extrude out a hand bone. Reposition the elbow and wrist bone on the Z axis to be in the middle of the arm. Grab the lowest bone on the spine and extrude it downwards to the pelvis. You can subdivide this bone if you want to. Extrude up a hip bone. Extrude down to about where the ankle is and subdivide the leg bone. Position the knee and ankle joint. Extrude out a foot bone, subdivide and position it something like this. If you want his little toesies to wiggle, you'll have to alter this rig. When placing finger bones, it's sometimes helpful to enable snapping and select volume. Position bones to line up with the finger joints. Just extrude from the wrist bone to the knuckles and then down the finger. With these bones in place, start naming them. Use whatever naming scheme you like. However, any bone that isn't center aligned, add a dot R at the end of the name. This tells Blender that it's a right bone, which will help us symmetrize our rig later. Select at the back of the ankle and extrude a bone backwards. Extrude a bone forwards from the knee. Hit Alt P and choose clear parent on both of these new bones. Extrude a bone back from the elbow and one from the wrist. Clear parent on both of these. I move the extra elbow and knee bones away from the body a bit. Select these new bones individually, and under the bone properties, disable deform. In pose mode, select the new ankle controller bone, and shift select the lower leg bone. Hit shift I, and choose two active bone. Change the chain length to two. Probably a good idea to name these new bones. I call the knee bone the leg ikpole.r, <laughs> and the ankle bone the foot or leg ik.r. Same with the arm bones. Select the yellow lower leg bone. In bone constraints tab, select the leg IK pole as the pole target. You might want to change the angle. I ended up using negative 90 degrees. You can parent this knee bone to the leg IK bone by selecting the leg IK and then the knee bone and hitting control P in edit mode, choose keep offset. In pose mode, select this bone, and then this bone, hit shift I, choose two active bone. Set up the IK constraint like on the legs. The chain length is two, the pull target is armature, and the bone is the arm IK pull target. Might have to change the pull angle to negative 90 as well. Select all of the bones in the hand connected to the wrist bone and turn off inherent rotation in the bone properties. Select the hand controller bone and then this bone, use shift control C to apply a child of constraint, set inverse. Do this for the rest of the fingers. Once all of that is set up, go into edit mode, select all under the armature menu, select symmetrize. You could parent all the objects to the armature in one go but I'm going to work my way through parenting and weight painting several objects at a time. In object mode, shift select the pants, boots, toes, and the armature last. Hit Control P and choose with automatic weights. 
you can decide the stack order of your modifiers, how your mesh looks will change depending on if your subdivision comes before or after your armature. Both ways work as far as I know, but I generally have my armature deform the mesh before the subdivision modifier. Select the armature and go into pose mode, select this bone and try moving it around. The legs are currently set up with only an IK chain, so this bone will move the leg around and this bone will be what the knee points towards. Select this bone and then this bone and hit shift Control c choose child of. Lift his leg up and check if anything needs weight painting. Whenever I have pants that are separate from a shirt object, I get this sort of thing where the pants fall off. In object mode, select the armature and then shift select the pants and switch into weight paint mode. Select the leg bone and tab into edit mode. Select the upper edge loop of the pants and click remove with a weight of 1. That's worked surprisingly well already. Do the same for the right upper leg. In weight paint tool setting, click the blend mode and select subtract. Drop the strength. I removed some of this leg's control from our model's backside. You can use the vertex selection mode, which lets you more or less mask which vertices you are affecting. And I did the same for the other side. Once you have it all looking good, go into pose mode and select this bone and then this bone. Hit Control shift c and select child of. Go into the other bone constraints tab and select set inverse. Now, this base spine bone will move the legs as well. Select the leg band and knife holder, followed by the armature and hit Control p Choose with automatic weights. Select the leg band and go through removing every bone from the vertex group except for the leg.r. And the same with this object. Now in pose mode, move this leg around and see if your objects move nicely. Might have to tab into edit mode, select all and hit assign with a weight of 1. Now parent his little ninja tool pouch to the armature. Move the leg, and you can see it needs some work. Delete all the vertex groups except for the pelvis. Select all the vertices in edit mode and assign with a weight of 1 to the pelvis vertex group. Select the chest, front pouches, and both shoulder objects and parent them to the rig. You can leave the leg control over this lower part of the body if you like, but I'm going to get rid of that. Select the armature, and then the chest object, go into weight paint mode. Tab into edit mode, and select these vertices. And remove a weight of 1 from at least the hip and leg groups. Select all, and remove the legs and hip bones control over the chest entirely. Do the same for the other side. In pose mode, position the bones in the upper body to take a look at how the automatic weights did with the chest. I don't want the shoulder objects to deform with the arms. Tab into edit mode, select all. Click an arm bone and tab into edit mode. Click remove with a weight of 1. Repeat this for every bone you want to remove. I also don't want the arm to cause his chest to crumple in. In weight paint mode, subtract some of the arm control from the chest. I also don't want the arms to affect these pockets so use whichever method you prefer to remove the vertex weight. All of this looks okay, but I don't want the jacket to twist when he turns his head. Select the armature, and then this object. In edit mode, select all the vertices. Go into weight paint mode, and select the neck bone. Tab into edit mode, and hit remove with a weight of 1. Back in weight paint mode, select the head bone, and do the same. Parent the arm object to the armature with Control p use automatic weights. It should be perfect as is. Might want to fill in these holes, however. Use F3 to search for a grid fill, use a span of 2 and an offset of 1, and it should fill it in like so. And then, extrude out another loop of faces on the hand. Select the hand, hand plate, and then the armature, Control p to parent with automatic weights. If your hand plate is being weird like mine, we could use a data transfer modifier, but that's a topic for another video. Perhaps just removing the finger's control over it would be sufficient, but I ended up removing all control over it except for on the pinky hand bone. Now parent the armature to the head. It looks pretty good. I don't want the neck bone to deform the face at all. Now add the headband objects, make sure only the head bone has control over them. Same with the ear and sideburns. You can easily just delete every vertex group besides the head bone, or go through each bone one by one and remove a weight of one. 
and then the same thing again with the headband tie and all of the hair objects. Things are starting to move well now. I'm going to change my armature display to stick and not apply any custom appearances to any bones, but feel free to make any modifications. After rigging, I decided to add an extra edge loop into his armpits to help with deformation. One last thing to note is the IK chain on the arm seems to twist his arm a bit. I wasn't a fan of this, so I ended up disabling the influence of my IK constraint on the forearm bones, and adding a child of constraint to the hand IK bones using the forearms as the bone targets. If we wanted to use the IK constraints without twisting the arm, we'd have to set up multiple parallel bone chains in the arms and do some fancier stuff. Since my goal was a static pose and not full animation, I wanted to avoid that for now. This rig has pretty much all the deformation bones it needs as is, but with the inclusion of a bit of controller bones, you could turn it into an acceptable animation rig. And the geometry on the model is set up so that it deforms pretty well with the rig. The current way our model is weight painted worked fine for the static poses we gave him for the Chidori scene, but when we were making the thumbnails for the first couple tutorials, we had him in a more dynamic pose, and we realized that his heel, ankle, and butt deform odd, so with a couple minor adjustments to the weight painting, it worked a lot better. Also, maybe just knowing anything about human anatomy would have benefited us massively. So, have fun making some Naruto fan art. Thanks for watching! I hope you found something in my process useful. Okay, bye. I love you guys.